Coach Starkanian, rather busy week for you. I guess we can say that just about every week. It's been a busy week for you lately. Let's start with the news at the top. Now, the Rebel basketball team is ineligible for the NCAA tournament this year, but on Friday of last week, uh, a, a judge here in the state of Nevada ruled at least on a temporary restraining order that the team will be able to practice to prepare for a possible NCAA tournament bid. Coach, your thoughts on, on that news of the week? The team still has some life left to go to the NCAA tournament this year. You know, that's something that the team wanted to do. I stayed out of that totally. In fact, every time that the attorneys came and talked to them, I left the room, and I, uh, so I stayed out of that totally. And I've already said that, you know, if they go to the tournament, I won't coach. I'll, uh, Timmy will coach the team. And, uh, because that's really what the NC toy wanted to do. The punishment should have been for, uh, they wanted the punishment for me, and certainly I don't believe there's anybody out there that thinks those kids should be, be punished for anything. They were five, six years old uh, uh, at the time that, that I had my problem with the NC toy. So, uh, so I think if I set out the term, it'll probably be easier on them from a public relations standpoint. Well, not only that, but I believe attorney Steve Stein is arguing from the point of view that last year, the university and you made a deal with the NCAA to let Johnson, Ogman, and that team go and left these guys out of the deal, in, in essence saying last year's team was much more important, we're going to go with these guys and forget about the team next year. And, and, the, and these guys, from an, from an attorney's point of view, he's saying, wait a minute, that's not fair to be playing the games, use these guys as pawns. Well, actually, Ron, it's not, the, the decision is, is really an unfair decision from in way every back, way. 77. That should have never, ever happened. The only reason, uh, he, he, their own chairman and infractions committee said that it would be utterly outrageous to punish the university uh, if they had a court order, and, and yet they do have a court order. The only reason they have a court order preventing is because I didn't get a fair hearing. So in, in every respect, it's, a, it's an unfair decision, but yet the university and myself, and uh, we agreed to last year's punishment, so I'm going to set out the tournament. But, uh, you know, whether they, the kids play or not, I really don't know. Good. All right, let's take a look at the game now. The Rebels played this past week, took on Utah State and the Thomas & Mack Center. Coach, this was it. Final game in the T&M. Of course, you rescinded your resignation, but for the moment, let's go ahead and call this the final game at least and see what happens from there. As you walk out of the court for the final time and get the fans, the cheering, your thoughts as you walked out there the final time? Uh, you know, I got very emotional. I think anybody would. You know, it was a very touching time. Tough game, too, right after that first bucket of the game. It sort of break the ice there. Nice pass by J.R. Ryder to Melvin Love. The fans, a sellout crowd in the TNM. First one this year respond. There's another pass by J.R. Ryder that finds a way to Melvin Love. No charge on that one, Coach. <laughs> that was a good call. <laughs> As Melvin knocks him down, there's Brad Rothervel, former athletic director at UNLV on the bench, and a few of your buddies up there in the stands, Coach, with the Tark. Uh, not shirts on. They painted the Tark on their uh, chest there. Utah State was a tough team in this game. Well, you know, we, I didn't think we played real well, but, uh, you know, it could have been because Utah State played well. You know, every time you don't play well, there's usually, uh, usually a pretty good reason. Former Bears running back Walter Payton there at the game. A big Rebel fan, Walter Payton, is big bucket here. Everett Gray stops and pops the three-pointer. 13 minutes left in the game. It was 42-38, only a four-point lead for the Rebels. In fact, with about four minutes left, it was only a four-point game. Dexter Boney with a rebound. Slam, that was a big bucket there for that Dexter. That was a real big play. And then you had trouble with a couple of players. Elmore Spencer and Everett Gray fouled out with about three minutes left in the game, and this was still a four to five point game at that point. It was still a close game. Another big bucket here. Watch Dexter drive. Dexter goes the basket as well as anybody we've had. That was a bucket that really sealed the victory for the Rebels. They ended up winning by a dozen points. But Reggie Manuel, how about this shot here by Reggie? Well, first Dexter driving, uh, slashing to the bucket there one more time. But Reggie Manuel, it didn't count. He was fouled well before the shot, but he throws up one from, oh, about, oh, it was beyond half court here. Nothing but net, huh? We work on that every day. Reggie practices that one, as you can <laughs> tell right there. As Coach Tarkanian there on the sidelines, elated, relieved after a tough, hard-fought game. That was one you didn't want to lose, was it? Well, you never want to lose, but you know, Well, you're not playing, that one, yeah. especially. Final game of the Thomas and Mac as you walk off a of court there. Your, your feelings again, Coach, as... as it all came to an end there. Yeah. You know, it's hard to say what I was feeling. You know, I really don't, you know, I, I naturally I was very subdued at the time, but I, I don't really, I can't really recall how I felt. You're just so. happy to get away with the win, probably, right. at that point. And then one of the most emotional moments, your assistant coach, Tim Gergerich, comes over in the postgame Tim, ceremony. Tim's the best there is. There's nobody better than Tim. Gives you a nice little kiss there on top of the head, and then 
That's when things get rather emotional there in the Thomas and Mack Center in front of the fans that stayed there for about a half an hour ceremony following the game. You were given a handful full of uh, gifts by the university. Number two retired. Coach Tarkanian's old college number at Fresno State. I've seen you wearing jerseys before, but I always see 32 on your jersey. But no, somebody somewhere saw number two right. on your jersey. They, the players started that. I wore number two on, on a jersey, and it was in one picture. I can't remember which one it was in, and, and that's the one they've used. My, my number has never been a historical number. No. <laughs> they, 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 haven't re, they haven't retired at a Fresno. They won't put that in the Hall of Fame. No, but you've got Greg Anthony. You've got, it may be in the Hall of Fame, on the jersey of Greg Anthony, Larry Johnson, or Stacey Ogden, right, perhaps. Yes. Right. All right, Coach. Uh, you end your career at UNLV with a victory there. It, it's really a sad night. I went through it last year, but my career was nothing compared to Jerry Tarkanian's. I hate to see it happen. He's the best coach I've ever been around, and I've known him for over 30 years. And uh, I think it's going to be a sad night for the city and a sad night for the university. Tonight's a, it's a difficult night for me. I just hate to see it in. It's been so great. There have been so many great games. There have been great games at the convention center. There's never going to be a run like this ever, probably in a, in a city ever again. Uh, tonight's hard to believe it's the end is the end is here. It's uh, you know it's you know, I've, I've lost a lot of sleep the last week thinking about this. Well, when I first came here, I had been a high school band director for 10, 11 years, and so stepping into the program with the Shark and and uh, taking it and run, running with it uh, full speed was uh, just a, an experience that I'll never forget. I, mean, I can remember. I can remember way back to Seattle in 19, I believe, 19, maybe 87 when we were playing Iowa and we were down by 17, 18 points at halftime and the band was throwing their horns in their cases and wanting to walk out of the arena and, and uh, Dan and I, the assistant and I, were saying, no, we're going to stick this one out because if, if there's a way, Tark is going to find it. Gerald Patio lit it up yeah, in the second yeah. half. Yeah, and, and Brad Lohaus didn't hurt either when he yeah. missed that last second shot. All the way up until uh, the Final Four two years ago, and then and last year, the feeling that went through our stomachs is, uh, as we went through the last few minutes of that. And, and I wouldn't trade any of those minutes, not any of the minutes with the band and any of the minutes watching the team and, and watching Tark. And quite honestly, uh, I've been really proud that the team has, has befriended the band as they have, because in a lot of college athletics, the team, the, ath the athletes, sometimes don't have time for band members, but in this case, the athletes have really taken the band members un under their wing and have, and have really, it's really been a, a college spirit. And, you know, what more, what more can you ask for when you're a college student than something like that? All right, Rose Tarkanian, you are the niece to Jerry Tarkanian. What is it, what is it like having Jerry Tarkanian as your uncle? Uncle oh, Tark, Uncle yeah, Tark, Uncle Jerry, what do you call him? Uh, Uncle Jerry, Uncle, Uncle Jerry. Jer. Okay. Um, it's, it's exciting. Um, I would say it, more than all the basketball, it's just the, the fun and the, the greatest thing of it all is the family, the loyalty, how strong it is. Auntie Lois and Jerry, Jody, Danny, George, it's just been a great experience growing up just with the closeness of the cousins and everybody. And, and it seems like then basketball second, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, I, guess, I guess it would yeah. be, wouldn't it? But what do you think of sometimes? What goes through your mind when you see Uncle oh, Jerry on yeah. national TV winning a national championship at Denver in 1990? A, a barrage of emotions. I would say um, very excited, happy, proud, mostly proud, very proud. Tony, what, what's it been like for you to follow the Rebels, cover the Rebels as far as you have over the years? It's like the kid in the candy store, you know. Uh, they say that being a sportscaster or in sports journalism is like being a kid in the candy store. Let me tell you, doing play-by-play -play for the Rebels with their up-tempo style of play. Hardly ever a dull moment on the court. Up and down, back and forth, freewheeling, freestyle, showtime basketball is what it is. Is there a moment that stands out? Denver 1990, obviously. What is, that? is that what stands out as, as your greatest moment? Yeah, well, actually, I didn't call the game in 90, but a year before that, before Larry Johnson came, came along at UNLV, I did the game there in 89 when Anderson Hunt hit the three-point shot yes, that beat Arizona. And that was a game that really stands out in my mind as, as one of their big wins because they were a 10 point underdog coming in. And just to beat Lute Olsen was a big thrill for Jerry Tarkanian and the Running Rebels at that time.
You know, a new chapter in the legacy of the career of Coach Jerry Tarkanian will most likely be written somewhere, but perhaps none will be more astounding than Tark's final year.